Hello game makers, this is Game Maker Rob and in this tutorial I'll show you how to launch a battle from the overworld and how to get back to the world after you have defeated them. Let's get started. Hello guys, welcome to another Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial. Um, I've had a few requests to show people how to get the battle to spawn from the overworld map and then how to exit the battle back to the map. What I've done in preparation for this tutorial is I have imported a few sprites, I've made a new room. Inside the room we've got the OBJ main. This is the one that stores the arrays, the data for the hero and for the items and monsters. Uh, we've also got uh, a player object and we've also got the battle object in there and the player is on smiley island as you can tell it's a very attractive island with two lakes a mountain range and a tree goatee beard let's just run the game and i'll show you what happens at the moment so as soon as the game runs a battle is going to spawn this is because we are using battle spawn timer um, to launch to set battle to true as soon as battle becomes true and as long as state is in it it's gonna do all this code it's gonna create the monsters reset the variables set states ready and all of this code is gonna run no more battle code so and also the reason it's so fast is because we have uh, time to battle, battle spawns set to 30. If I try and move the player, you'll also see that uh, the screen, the player still moves. Even though he looks like a, a giant demon with something between his legs, uh, that's actually the player's legs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... Um, stop the player from moving when there's a battle the way that i do this is inside my player object um, where i'm taking input from the player to whether they can move or not i've got boolean i've got a variable uh, called disabled and if the player is not disabled then we can move around um, otherwise he won't be able to so the, how we're going to incorporate this into the battle is in the step event um, as soon as we set battle to true we're going to say obj player dot disabled equals true and that will stop the player from moving uh, normally you want to you want to uh, avoid using an object uh, to reference an instance um, but in this case it's perfectly fine because I'm only ever going to have one instance of OBJ player so um, it's always going to find that particular instance uh, so now we've disabled the player we now need to re-enable them after the battle's over so if we search for victory with control F there we go so if player is dead or it's a victory or we run, run away we end the battle and reset the state to win it um, and <laughs> I've already got uh, obj player dot disabled to false here already uh, I forgot to delete it when I was testing things out so this is going to re-enable the play movement so if I now run the game now there's a battle it doesn't matter what key I press I can't move let's just kill the demon and we can move again awesome so the next thing I want to do is I want to change it from timer based to movement based uh, just in case that's something you wanted to do yourself what I mean by that is we only want the battle spawn timer to increase 
if the player is moving. So all we need to do is inside the block of code where we increase the spawn timer, we're going to say If we're pressing any of these four keys, then increase the battle spawn timer. Let's also just increase it to a larger amount, let's say 120. I'm going to have a little uh, bug fix text just, just to make sure this is working properly. So at the very bottom of our battle object, the draw GUI event. Oops. Make a new region, call it book fix. And we're going to say draw set H align FA right draw set V align FA top. So we're going to draw in the top right, draw text. Room width zero. I'm going to show battle spawn timer. Let's run the game. So, as you can see in the top right, uh, battle spawn timer is not increasing at all. But as soon as we start, start moving, it will do. And as soon as it hits 120, we get a battle. So let's uh, kill the demon again. Spells, casting hurt seems to be the most effective way of killing, killing this guy. Still stunned. And this time is reset to zero. Awesome. And the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw a black background when the battle spawns. Obviously, this is not something that you need to do. Um, it's just in case you want to get that same effect back that we had in the original battle. This is how to do it. So we're going to say x1 equals 0, y1 equals 0, x2 equals x1 plus room width, y2 equals y1 plus room height. This is in the draw GUI event. If you remember um, in draw GUI, uh, the coordinates in the top left start at 0 and room height and room width will be the uh, bottom right corner. So we're going to draw a black rectangle from the top left to the bottom right. And we're going to say uh, draw set color C black draw rectangle X1, Y1, X2, Y2 and we do not want it to be an outline. So let's run the game. Now it's worth noting that we want this to run, this code for the rectangle, we want it to run before the other code, otherwise we're going to be drawing over stuff, like the, the monster or maybe the, the menu or something. So let's move around. Let's walk over the mountains. And there we go. So we're back to the original black background that's cool so we don't want the 
battle object to be persistent because if we have it persistent you're going to be having battles in every single room of your game world whether it's a main menu um, a player home or something like that um, as long as you keep it uh, to not persistent then just put uh, an instance of obg battle in every room where you want there to be a battle and that's all you need to do another thing to add is the order in which you put the objects into the game room is important because if if obj battle is reading things from obj main uh, main needs to come before battle same thing for uh, the play object and the battle object yeah the one last thing is what you might find difficulty in working out how to spawn different kinds of monsters in different areas if you guys have seen my uh, video on my own rpg i kind of briefly explain how i do it um, it's going to require its own video because it's probably going to be about 15 20 minutes worth of going over things and if that's of interest to any of you let me know and i will get a video done for that as well uh, that's it um i hope you enjoyed the video bye for now